let's look at what happened in Cardiff. Are you guys surprised that the way Wales turned up after a pretty pretty tough week? I think it was, do you know what? You can never judge it, can you, emotionally? So I'm there in Cardiff on Thursday and I'm thinking, emotionally, the deal's done, the strike's off, the, the stadium's going to be bouncing, the players are going to be absolutely rolled up and ready to go and that could work massively in Wales's favour. And then you see that first half where England played an attacking brand that we haven't seen for a while. We played at pace. Um, the the rock speed was great. We were winning collisions. Obviously, we scored a, a wonderful try with Anthony Watson in the corner off a first phase move that we haven't seen any of that yet really in the Six Nations. So Wales came to the party and I thought there'd be a lot more from that Welsh team. I really did. England were in control, I think, in the first half. Looked really good. Probably should have been way more points ahead, which effectively nullified the stadium. But um, I, I thought England played well. What I will say about Wales, and I feel pretty bad saying this, the way they play, the way Gats coaches, the game's moved on. You go back to Gats's, the way he sets his teams up over the last however many years. You go back to the Lions in 2021, how he set up that Lions team to try and play against Africa. The way Wales are playing, what he did with the Chiefs in Waikato. I just think Gats has got to evolve because the one-out rugby and the kicking that Wales showed, it was awful. As a performance, when you're expecting a massive reaction, I was really disappointed with how Wales turned up and how they played. You know, their attack, they just kept running short balls off nine with no movement, no deception. Then they're just kicking to Freddie Stewart the whole time. So England tactically and physically monstered them at times. And it wasn't a great game. Let's not dress it up to be an amazing occasion or anything like that. It was, uh, you know, hard-nosed rugby with two teams that are low on confidence, potentially learning about new ways to play or understanding coaches better than they have them previously. And there was a lot of pressure on both teams, but I thought I was really disappointed with Wales, thinking that there was going to be loads of energy coming into the game and what they put out there. Uh, you know, it was... Uh, and I look at Gats and go, that's how he sets his teams up. He's got to evolve as a coach because if that's what he's going to do, he hasn't got the players. He's not South Africa, so he hasn't got the players to play that way. And therefore, effectively, he needs to evolve as a coach or is he the right man to take Wales forward? I don't know. But Wales, as poor as Wales were, England were a lot better uh, at times and should have won that game way more comfortably than we did. On Wales, I actually feel a little bit for Gats. He's walked into an absolute shitstorm, which he said he didn't know. I think he would have known about some parts of it. But from his point of view, the romantic in me wishes that he didn't come back because his legacy and he's got the gate and stuff at the stadium. And it's the whole Alex Ferguson thing, isn't it? You walked away and it's he's the greatest. Like, oh, come back, Gats. And he always says no. I wish that was what happened because what you don't want to do is his legacy to be tarnished by what is happening now because ultimately he's in the middle of it. Whether or not he stays uh, as head coach or he goes to director of rugby, there's rumours of him going upstairs. I just, it is an absolute mess in Wales. And I know we got the game and watching the anthems, you're thinking, yeah, like this is going to be amazing. The drama in the lead up to the game added to the occasion. Um God, I feel bad saying this, but it's true. Two poor teams up against each other. And you saw, <laughs> and you saw, you saw that, you know, you could see the gulf between Ireland and France. And look, I'm going to say it, the way that Scotland's attack is, if you're going solely on attack, a lot of teams are good defenders now. Um, it's much of a muchness, really. A lot of it is around attitude and positioning. Like Ireland looked not the same with Bundyaki at 13. So personnel and positioning, but the attack from everything you've seen, if you go back to the New Zealand of old, their counter-attack, the way that their forwards used to carry and be, be able to ball play. Ireland are probably leading the charge in that now. Scotland as well. And we have went through the archives and the fact of some of the tries that they've scored in the wider channels. England and Wales, very limited. And I do wonder with England whether or not it's a confidence thing. When I look at Wales, you've got, oh, I sound like a right knob saying it, an ageing team with not a lot coming through. And then you've got I really like the look of Joe Hawkins and Mason Grady at 13, but the partnership we've not seen, so that's going to take time to evolve. Out with that, I'm like, you've got Lee Halfpenny, who's 45. He's not. I still like Lee Halfpenny, but if not Lee Halfpenny, then who? You've got Liam Williams, but he's not young coming through. I just worry for Wales. I really do. They bring Falatau back in. He was dropped. He was on the bench 
played really well when he came on against Scotland, looked good at the weekend. Tipperick was out the squad. We were all talking about Jack Morgan in the lead up. Alan Wynne Jones is 52. And as much as we love Alan Wynne Jones, yeah, you, you've got to say it, haven't you? Like he's, Oli Chasm completely, completely wiped the floor with him at the weekend. So from a Gatlin standpoint, I understand what you're saying, Goody, but it's like he has inherited this now. And maybe it's partly his fault. Or is that was that his job before? Was that his job before to do that? I don't think it is, but maybe it was. Well, I think as a head coach, tactically, when you're just running your boys off nine into brick walls all day and nothing changes throughout the game, you are responsible. So, uh, you know, you set a team up to play and, yeah, you've got to play to the, the, the players that you've got. So, Alan Wynne Jones ain't going to be running off nine and monstering people, is he? Because that's not him anymore. Um, you know, and you have to play. You want Chunza doing that, maybe Falatau, but you also need to build in deception around how they're playing. It was so easy for England to defend that at times. And yes, England won the, the battle of the breakdown and to all England fans, you are bloody welcome because Matthew Raynal, and you mentioned referees earlier, Matthew Raynal was very kind, very kind to us English, wasn't he? And I'll text him actually on Thursday night uh, to I see if he came. You. Well, no, I texted him on Thursday night to see if he was keen for a beer because he was in Cardiff. Um, and he said, no, Andy, I am tired. I watch my uh, games for prepare Saturday. And he prepared for Saturday and he gave us some interesting penalties, shall we say. Uh, if you're Wales and some of those penalties, the one, the classic one was Don Brandt when his hands were on the floor and his head was on the floor uh, near England's try line when he gives the turnover. Um, he was kind to England, um, but we did win the battle of the breakdown. And, you know, the game is won these days on physicality, the game line and the breakdown. When you look at how many rocks there are in the game, um, that is the fulcrum of how a team plays. If you can't win quick ball from a breakdown, if you can't win a breakdown, you ain't winning the game of rugby. And uh, England dominated that area. Some big performances. Ludlum was great. But to, to go back to Gatland, when your team is just playing the same way and they're plodding around the field, just playing off nine at a, a slow pace with no deception. You know, you, you look at the shapes and you, you talk about it, look at the shapes that Scotland, France, Ireland put on an attack. They've got layer upon layer upon layer. And England were the same at times, but Wales just looked average. And that is, it's got to, you've got to hold the coach accountable to that because he's coaching them how to play. Um, and they've got the talent in there to play off second receiver, to play balls out the back. But it just it was meat and drink to the England defence, wasn't it? There's been a lot of chat about, I guess rightly so, considering his stats. Owen Farrell, people are jumping on him pretty quickly with his kicking percentages, aren't they? He's not great off the tee at the minute, is he, Andrew? Out with that, I think he's playing well. Yeah. Um, do you know what? And it, people are moaning about, oh, Marcus Smith should have come on, all this stuff. The way the game was and how tense it was, um, it would have taken a ballsy call to take Owen Farrell off and bring Marcus Smith on to completely change the game. And yes, that's what England fans potentially wanted to see. But I thought during the game, Owen Farrell played pretty well. His goal kicking, listen, he's a world-class goal kicker. You, you can't question his ability over his career as a goal kicker. He, he was 33% at the weekend. I think he was he's 56% or something over the Six Nations, which isn't great. So you then have to question, does he deserve his place in the team? if he's the sole goal kicker. If there was someone else in that back line that could kick goals, you'd have expected that to swap over during the game. Um, but, you know, again, Borthas has backed himself into a corner by making Faz captain because it potentially makes Owen Farrell undroppable. Um, and I thought his actual... Normally, his kicking's the strength of his game and the attacking side of it is perhaps not a strength, but I thought the weekend it was the other way around. His goal kicking was poor, but the way he managed the game and the way he controlled field position and uh, everything that went on with setting how, up how England played against a poor Wales team, I think he played pretty well. Alex Mitchell looked good at nine when he came on. Looked rapid. Yeah, he did. Uh, I thought Jack Van Portfleet played really well, though, to be honest. Um, you know, there's always going to be the odd error here or there from players, but... Yeah, Mitchell looked good when he came on against the Tyrone Welsh team. I thought Ludlam was great. Freddie Stewart, man of the match. Ollie Lawrence, unbelievable again. Double roll, man. Matt, how many double rolls are he allowed in the game? I know. Well, that try for Anthony Watson, you saw Matthew Ray now put his hand to his mouth as if he was going to blow the whistle and he went, no, I'm goodies, mate, so I'll just play on. 
Uh, we scored a try in the corner. So, yeah, you're right. But you, uh, you play to the ref, don't you? You get away with it. You know, there was the occasion when Marotoji in the rock just came in from the side, dived over it. England get the penalty um, for holding on because the Welsh boys couldn't clean them out because Mara did. But you play to the referee. Another day, England might get pinged off the park, but because it was Machu Ray now, he's my friend. I stuck up for him when he went uh, hard against the Aussies. Uh, we got what we deserved. Were you surprised that those three England subs came on with just seconds to go? No. Um, and I've been there. I don't know about you, Jim, but I've been there where the one that always sticks with me, Andy Robinson was the head coach of England. Absolute cowboy. We are playing Italy away. We are winning by 40 points. And I was the only fucker on the bench that didn't get on. I was raging after the game, not even for a second. And I've been, I reckon I've been there 10 times where I've been on the bench for England and not come on. So I'd have had 10 more caps. So I, listen, people, the game was won. You, you empty the bench, you give them a cap. They're not going to do anything because there's only a minute left, but it just makes them feel part of it. Because I've been sat in the changing room where boys have had a win and a comfortable win and you've not got on and your kit's clean. And it doesn't matter in terms of, you know, I was at this pub on, on Saturday and, and some bloke turned around to me and said, oh, you know, do they get paid the same if they get on or if they don't get on? I said, yeah, they get paid the same whether they're on the field or not. Um, so it wasn't anything to do with that. But he wanted them just to get on the field to experience something. I don't have a problem with it. Pod, 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 pod. Rugby pod.